Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. The shift of the governorship elections in Edo State is our key focus. Today we've got Ikechiku Ikeji, who is a legal practitioner and a public affairs analyst. Thank you for coming. Thank you so today. much for having me, Chamberlain. Well, eventually, I like announce a date. Uh, yesterday they did say no, we'll proceed after the police gave that advisory. But now the date is all out there. Uh, from the look of things, from the way you see this, you think this is a normal scenario? No, absolutely abnormal. Absolutely. Um, <coughs> curious. Even uh, in light of all the explanations they've given. Well, um, explanations are always available to be given, if you ask me. Um, I, if, I, I don't know, verifiable and cogent? Very verifiable and cogent. There's hardly, let, let me give you this um, 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 talk. You see, as a lawyer, I know that if I stand, if I sit as a judge on cases, it will be easy, and there are two sides to each case, A and B. It will be easy for me to logically explain either sides. As a judge? As a judge. And that means that I can decide to go the, the way of A, and I will have very, very brilliant logical explanation to support A. I can also go this way of B, and I also have very, very brilliant logical explanation to support B. And so, verifiable and cogent reasons will always be available. But it doesn't mean it has to be beyond reasonable doubt, does it? No, it has to, if it's criminal, it has to be beyond reasonable doubt. But ordinarily, this has raised reasonable doubt, at least amongst right-thinking persons, amongst the ordinary man on the street, the man who, a casual bystander who is completely disinterested in the in the transaction at hand, would certainly ask questions that why, especially someone, a casual bystander who has a fair knowledge of the history of elections in Nigeria, especially the recent history, given the Dasuki um, era when Dasuki went to the Chatham House to announce the um, intention to, to, to ask that the 2015 elections be postponed from, 20, from February I think February to uh, about February 14. Uh, February 14, thereabouts. Uh, so, a lot of there was a lot of questions. People actually doubted the real intention behind that, and that same doubt can still uh, be uh, applied in this scenario. So, um, I think it's curious, and it's a delicate play on the integrity quotient of the of the elections themselves. Let, let's look at the issue of security now uh, yes. because uh, when the former NSA uh, was at Chatham House, uh, when he dropped that, uh, what a lot of people would call bombshell, yes. then some thought, hey come on, this is your personal opinion, but he came back home and we saw that exactly. the electoral body keyed into what he did say then but that was the nation, that was Nigeria. But for Edo State, which some would say is a standalone election, and everyone had thought that the police had already deployed one of the biggest uh, number of its uh, men to Edo State. Do you still think that uh, security would have been compromised uh, since it's just uh, a standalone election? That's why it's curious. The police declared that they'd um, deployed 25,000 personnel. Um, the uh, Security and Civil Defense Corps also said they've deployed 10,000 um, officers to Edo State. And the excuse that the um, security agencies gave borders on uh, on events that will take place 12th and 13th, two clear, three clear days after the, the elections would have held. And so it gets, it, it could not get more curious than it is now. I don't see any reason whatsoever why that election should be postponed. But part of what uh, those who are responding are saying is that if you look at our recent history, uh, you'll also notice that when it's always a little before the festive period, there's always that warning and that threat about uh, insurgents attacking some of those public places. And so it's not exactly strange unless we fail to consider those facts that are raised. Um, yes, you, you, you are correct um, with, that kind, with that statement, with that um, thought process and thought pattern. But <clears throat> the question again is, to what extent would you say the proficiency of a security agency can be, um, can be said to be good when such issues come up and it easily falls 
fails to live up to his expect to expectations. I think it's a clear situation of failing to live up to these expectations as a sec as a security apparatus. The security architecture, in my view, should be able to take care of any such threats. And in any case, in any case, deployment it's not jet it's not jet science. Uh, even if today jet science appears to be um, very cheap. Uh, it's not futuristic science that you can't fathom, you can't um, easily think about. Uh, Edo State is one state, like you have rightly mentioned, in my view. Uh, Edo State is one state, and Nigeria is a, a statistic state. So if one state alone, security threat, would make you to postpone elections, what happens to the statistic states? We had a situation where in 2015, Elections were held in Yobe State. Local government elections were held in Yobe State a few weeks before the general elections. Even in the thick of the Boko Haram insurgency, even a few months after the Bunu Yadi massacre of our, of our school students. And the NSA came up and said that the security threats there would not allow for elections to hold. And we agreed with him then, even after um, several criticisms. You and know. yet, the elections took place in Borono State, even while we were aware that some local governments were still under Boko Haram control. You know, you're bringing up a lot of logic uh, into all of this. Uh, one doesn't need to be a security expert to look at some of the logic, uh, logical reason <laughs> you're bringing to the fore now. And uh, if you also put that side by side with some other uh, uh, minds from the state that have been on the same matter they say and uh, the most curious thing is that this is coming just uh, after the visit of the president uh, wondering if that security uh, report or analysis was uh, arrived at uh, just after his visit I, I thank you for raising this point i already had it as one of the points that i researched into that should be brought to the fore if the president visited a day and the president con controls the the highest level of security protection in Nigeria today. He is the number one citizen. He represents the Nigerian sovereignty. He represents the Nigerian people. And so the security around the president is the, the, the stringer, the most strong, this most strict, um, the strongest um, security apparatus that you can find. And if the president, with such security situation around him, was able to visit Edo State, hold that um, rally, and went back to Abuja safely. How can we now agree to the situation that there are security issues? And now, let's not take it away from the, 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 the INEC that they, they are very much within their legal powers to postpone the elections within this, a certain period of time. And they so did, as having said that um, the elections will now be held 28th September. They are still within time. But we are not talking about within time. Elections will be held anyway. It is a compulsory responsibility on INEC to hold election. It is a compulsory event that elections we'll, we'll must come back. hold. We'll come back especially so that we can explore that uh, window of INEC uh, extending this election where you said within time. Uh, let's uh, quickly move to Abuja. Uh, Mark, where? 